everyone, my name is Christopher Starke and on behalf of my colleagues from the University of Düsseldorf, I'm going to present our paper which is called Implications of AI Unfairness in Higher Education Admissions. We are all social scientists focusing on quantitative research methods at the University of Düsseldorf and at the Center for Advanced Internet Studies. So, uh, why higher education in the first place? Um, we argue that higher education plays a dual, very crucial role in, with regards to artificial intelligence. First, because they are key institutions to train and to educate future AI experts. And the second one is uh, the higher education system itself undergoes severe changes and is effective, uh, or profoundly affected by uh, changes, well, by tr changes due to, to artificial intelligence in research, but also in training. Think, for example, um, systems that can predict potential dropouts. Think of robo-grading and what we did in our paper on automated <coughs> admission systems. But first, before we get into the results of our paper, let me first outline the concept of fairness that is behind our, our presentation. Uh, we distinguish between what we call faces of fairness and dimensions of fair fairness. First, to the faces. Um, the first one is factual fairness, what we call uh, it like this, and it refers to the algorithm itself, to the technical side of the problem. So how can we design fair algorithms? And over the next days, we will hear a lot of presentations dealing with exactly this issue. What we, as social scientists, focus on is what we call perceived fairness. So we focus on the individual and how people who are affected by these decisions, how fair they, are, they perceive, perceive um, the systems to be. This is the two faces. Then the two dimensions we draw here on uh, organizational justice literature and refer to distributive fairness on the one hand and procedural fairness on the other hand. Distributive fairness is directed at the outcome of a decision-making process, so the decision itself, for example, the fair classification, and procedural fairness is directed at the process of the decision-making process. So whether the process is consistent, whether it is ethical, whether it is revocable, and so on and so forth. So as social scientists, we focus on this part. We will hear a lot less over the next few days about the perceived fairness part, I assume. And what we did in our paper is that we compared perceived fairness, both distributive and procedural, between algorithmic decision-making and human decision-making in the higher education context. We assume that ADMs are perceived to be fairer than HDMs, which is the first part of the paper. And the second part is we would like to, to investigate the subsequent effects on perceived, of perceived fairness. First, on exit, and second, on voice. What does it mean? So exit is, uh, reflects maybe students who actively turn their backs on university and use ADM systems. They, and voice um, refers to, to students who maybe speak out against universities that, that use such systems. We assume that uh, perceived fairness will, well, will probably have negative effects on the wish to exit from the university and uh, the wish to, to protest against the university. So how did we test that? How, we, how did we do this? Um, we tested our hypothesis with an incentivized quantitative laboratory survey. What does it mean? We invited people to the lab and gave them the money for answering a questionnaire. Um, in total, we, uh, our sample consists of 304 university students, and we presented them with a hypothetical admission system, um, algorithmic uh, admission system, compared to one that actually already exists, which is led by a human committee. And then we tested the subsequent effects. We asked them about their perceived fairness, the distributive fairness and the procedural fairness with each with a single item. And then we asked them about voice and exit, both measured with, uh, with four items. For example, items like, I would actively oppose the admission system or I prefer other universities that you do not use an ADM admission system. We see here already, in the, there are mean differences between the two groups. So ADM systems are perceived as fairer um, than HDM systems. So um, there is already 
with this was both measured on a five point scale so th there is people tend to favor or to tend to 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 think that adm systems are more fair both um, at the distributive dimension and at the procedural dimension. In the sub subsequent step, we wanted to see whether those differences are statistically significant, and for that we computed t-tests with dependent samples, and we actually find that both of those uh, mean differences are significant. Then we ran OLS regression models using exit and voice as the dependent variables, and a whole lot of, of independent variables, and we find that with regard to exit, um, procedural fairness of the ADM system does have a significant impact, but we also assumed that the distributed fairness would have, an, would have a significant impact, so this hypothesis is partly accepted, partly rejected. As to the dependent variable voice, both of our assumptions were confirmed, so we find that distributive fairness as well as procedural fairness have a significant effect on the intention to protest against uh, a system that will be in implemented at such a university. So what can we take away from, from, these, from these findings? Um, first, we see them as a positive sign, or starting to as a positive sign for universities who, that try to manage their student admissions uh, via algorithmic decision making. But, and this is very important that we want to stress here, the implementation needs to be carried out with extreme caution because subsequent effects by students, for example, voice, for example, exit, and in the paper we also um, included a third the variable that was the reputation of the university, they all depend on whether those systems are perceived to be fair or unfair. So we believe that fairness really is here the key, the key element to, um, to consider. And last but not least, we strongly encourage more researchers to think on different conceptions of fairness, really going into the, the theoretical elements of it, and that it actually makes sense to distinguish between different faces and different, um, different dimensions of fairness to really map out what we actually mean when we use the term in a more broadly sense. Thank you. But where is it? The last slide is not here. Okay, thank you for your attention. <laughs>